Hello. We begin tonight's program with a big question. Is it just enough to have agricultural bumper harvest, or are there many more to the attainment of adequate food security? We will engage you with answers to this question, which will come in different perspectives in the course of this program. Good evening, and welcome to Weekend Pile. Many developing countries like Nigeria undoubtedly face considerable challenges in establishing continuous supply of safe and wholesome food. An efficient food supply system is expected to operate on a legal framework for food control, regulation and inspection services, the laboratories for possible testing and general monitoring of supply chain. It is a fact that as cities expand, food must travel through rural communities unavoidably under different and sometimes conflicting municipal authorities, resulting to a situation where food can be subjected to multiple taxes. Some of the key players in food supply chain are traders and transporters. How much more will they have to pay to distribute food considering bad roads and difficult terrains of huge sources of food supply. The trend has resulted in rising food prices affecting distribution channels such as retailing and street sales, which are important and convenient sources of cheap food for low-income urban consumers. On our show tonight, we will address issues hindering activities of food supply chain as they relate to high cost with experts from across the nation in our correspondence report. My name is Kirin Romayo. Thank you for choosing to stay with your weekend companion on a Saturday like this. The news is next. Ahead of the proposed closure of the Nnamdiya Azikiwe International Airport, Abuja, and the relocation of flights to Kaduna Airport, emergency repair work on the Kaduna Abuja dual carriageway has reached appreciable level of completion. Works and housing correspondent Hamza, Mohammed Hamza Sheikh reports that both Minister and the Minister of State for Power, Works and Housing were at the project site Friday to monitor quality and pace of work towards meeting the February 26th deadline. Emergency repair work on the Abuja Kaduna dual carriageway involves rehabilitation of collapsed portions and filling of notorious potholes. It starts from the Zuba flyover to the Kaduna Western Bypass. When we heard that the federal government are going to rehabilitate the road, we were so excited. It's very good. We really appreciate the federal government. No any gallop now. Every motorway is passing on the road. They are feeling okay. The minister who explained that the emergency repair work is to ensure safe and smooth drive pending the award of its... Senator Abuja, defense correspondent Isaac Nkoma reports. Apart from carrying out ceremonial functions of the Nigerian army, the GATS Brigade also has the responsibility of providing certain level of security at the presidency on a weekly basis. Hence, this change of guards parade. As you know, the guards brigade is the focal point for regimentation and discipline in the Nigerian army. The physical change of troop usually takes place today. And again, the ceremonial change of guard parade at the presidential uh, villa also takes place every Monday. The old guards are from 7 Guards Battalion, Lungi Barracks, Abuja, while the new guards are of the 177 Guards Battalion, Kefi, Nashara State. Are you sure you've handed over correctly? Yes, sir. Are you sure you've taken over correctly? Yes, sir. Junior guard. I love it. And I, w I really want to march with them. So would you, would you someday join the army and partake in a parade? No. This is my first experience. So and how was it? It was very, very nice. This public ceremonial change of guards parade was revived by the chief of army staff, Lieutenant General Tuku Burate, in the last quarter of 2016 and upholding the tradition of the guards brigade. In Abuja, Isaac Nkuma, NTA News. Chairman, Senate Committee on Ecology and Climate Change, 
Bukar Abba Ibrahim has urged the Minister of Environment and its power titles to upscale their records in revenue generation and management of funds to accommodate their policies and programs. This was when some agencies under the ministry defended their 2017 budget. National Assembly correspondent Ifanya Zumba was there for NTA. Agencies under the Ministry of Environment that came before the Committee for Budget Defense are Environmental Health Officers Regulation Council of Nigeria, National Biosafety Management Agency, National Park Services, and National Environmental Standards Regulation Enforcement Agency. The Director General, Lawrence Anokam, said for the past two years, their agency has been operating on rented apartments. Rapid depletion of our forests and the receding lecture and other ecological problems and the ravaging desertification are worrisome developments and we would like to know what provisions the relevant agencies have made for tackling the menace. Agencies under the Ministry of Information defended their budget before the Senate Committee on Information and National Orientation, like the Voice of Nigeria. In 2016, what we achieved was uh, trying to get ourselves to stream and maintenance of some of our transmitters. We have eight, only two are functional now, but we'll make sure that those functional two are in good order. Also, Surveyor General of the Federation, Ebisinte Awudu, who was before the House Committee on Works, said that their budget proposal for 2017 is $5.7 billion and is seeking for additional $1 billion. The template used in budget office wrote rehabilitation of boundaries. That boundary is a template. You even see construction of roads, but it's not road construction is a template because they don't have a template in detail for surveying and mapping. So they look at the next attribute or feature. That is all about it. We shall be coming to you and uh, the, on the deliverables. But if it's a one-off capture, well, I think uh, it's quite uh, huge. So we'd like to have a proper look into the details of uh, what has been done. The budget defense continues. From the National Assembly, Ifani Izumba, NT News. Deputy Senate President Ike Kwaramado has refuted allegations of diverting funds meant for the development of the Southeast into buying 32 personal uh, property. A statement issued by his special advisor on media, Uche Anichiku, described the allegations as false and an orchestrated campaign made in concert with some political forces to malign the person of Senator Ike Kwaramado. Now, with peace effectively taking root in communities liberated from the activities of insurgents in Yobe State, local council election has been conducted in Gujiba local government with an impressive turnout. Before now, such elections were held in Damatu, the state capital. Husseini Mohammed is a has a report. In the morning, eligible voters from the 10 wards of Gujiba local government, all returnees having lived in internally displaced persons camps for almost two years, troop out and mass to participate in the history. Repositioning the ailing authorities to live up to their mandate of boosting agricultural activities. Musbao Dan Wahab has the report. The task of Nigeria's River Basin Development Authorities is to enhance agricultural productivity and deliver a host of other water management services. But over the years, achieving the task has been hampered by poor management of the abundant water resources, especially those needed for irrigation. At some point, some of the equipment and machineries were either concessioned or sold out to private individuals in the guise of privatizing the activities of the river basins. This, unfortunately, led to a near total collapse of the river basins. As a wake-up call for them, this retreat aims at ensuring that managing and executive directors of river basin development authorities imbibe greater managerial skills and a desired commitment. 
with the availability of natural resources not in contention, aligning the talk here with the work on hand is the core challenge. For us to move forward, for us to be able to take these rural villages to the next level, we must entrench poverty and accountability and shun corrupt practices. That is one thing that has killed the rural villages in the past. We in the legislature are willing to assist with anything you require to move this sector forward. On its part, the Ministry of Water Resources says it will put in place an evaluation mechanism for managers of the 12 River Basin Development Authorities in Abuja, Musbal, Ben Wahab, NC News. Senate President Abubakar Bukola Saraki says as leaders that are aware of the burden of leadership as contained in the Quran. He said this uh, during the closing ceremony of the 2017 National Quran Recitation Competition held in Lori, the Kora State Capital. Ablahi Musasileja reports. In the third, first edition organized by Center for Islamic Studies, Osman Nofodio University, Sokoto, the senior president called on those who study the Quran to continue to spread its teachings in a peaceful manner to spread peace, love, coexistence, understanding, tolerance, and harmonious living. Let us use our knowledge of the Quran to let the world know that those who discourage acquiring education are not good Muslims. Educate non-Muslims about the dictates of the Holy Quran in a manner capable of redressing misconceptions about Islam and promoting harmony in the general population. The Sultan of Sokoto, Alaji Muhammad Sa'ad Abokar III, enjoined Muslims to hold on to their beliefs and ensure unity among Nigerians. In the sixth category that the Quran was contested for, Faisal Muhammad Awar from the Mpara State emerged overall winner in the male category, while Ashutu Musa Ghali from Bauchi State emerged the overall winner in the female category. <laughs> The winners are to represent the country in a world competition later this year in Saudi Arabia. Abdullahi Musa Sleja, NTA News. Now, the wife of the President Aisha Muhammad Buhari is back from the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia after performing the Lesser Hajj. State House correspondent Aliu Kabir reports that the wife of the president arrived at the Nambia Zikiwa International Airport, Abuja, Saturday afternoon. He is set to raise the bar in ethical standards and uh, professionalism in media consultancy services across the country. The group chief executive officer of the organization, Sane Adetu, made this known at uh, the official unveiling of Algorithms Media in Lagos. Musa Toliat has that report. It was a night for captains of industry. The leading terminals in Nigeria says it is ready to invest millions of dollars in the terminal in order to bring it to world standard. The managing director company, Simon Travers, I said this when he received members of the committee on port privatization in Lagos, as Ken Eboluge tells us. The Apple Store, if you use devices with IOL. This is Weekend File, your weekend companion, as we move into the nitty gritty of tonight's show. Federal government's task force set up to advise it on how best to address the rising cost of food items revealed that the hike was not due to food shortage, rather high cost of transportation, diesel, and multiple taxation. The factors. Gioni M6 with a 5,000 milliampere battery that lets you go on for two days on a single charge. Gioni M6, always in power. There's a situation, everybody's speculating. 
say, what have we done to deserve this constant changing? Father, Father, hear us, because we trust the failed us. They say, look to the Lord for salvation and he shall redeem you. Lord, I'm getting frustrated. Yes, I'm losing my patience. I've been waiting for so long. Because this is, this is who we are. Airtel, the smartphone network. The federal government's social investment program has begun. The poorest and most vulnerable in the land get 5,000 naira monthly, and phase one has started in nine states of the federation. 200,000 unemployed graduates have been engaged in the NPAR Volunteer Corps designed to engage 500,000 people. 5.5 million children will be fed regularly in the homegrown school feeding program which kicked off in three states last year with nine more to be added this year. And under the Government Enterprise and Empowerment Program, GIVE, thousands of cooperatives, market women, farmers and enterprising youth have been receiving between 10,000 and 100,000 naira soft loans since November 2016. The social investment program has begun. It can only get better. We promise change. Change is here. Do you crave class? Do you have taste? And do you care about comfort? If you do, then for your next event, a stay away from home, a business trip, or a holiday, visit Jade's Hotel at 24 Undola Crescent, Wusei Zone 5, Abuja. Check out our world-class services, exquisite suites, restaurant and bar, gymnasium, spa, and grills, and our outdoor catering services and cuisines. At Jade's, it can only be better. For bookings and reservations, visit us today at 24 Undola Crescent, Wusei Zone 5, Abuja, or visit www.jadeshotels.com. Our email address is info at jadeshotels.com. You can also call us on 09291-9321 or 0810-909-7956. Jade's Hotels, welcome to life. The Future Assured Project and its components get involved. Initiated by the wife of the president, Her Excellency Aisha Muhammad Buhari is not relenting in championing the cause of Nigerian women and children. Its provision of free medical screening, educational support, and a fight against malnutrition, especially in the Northeast, has indeed informed international recognition, partnerships, and awards. We are very grateful and appreciative for your wonderful gesture you have accorded to us. With future assured, Nigerian women and children are assured of a bright future. Future is assured when we join hands to promote the health of our women and children. Get involved. Get involved and support the Future Assured initiative. Future Assured, promoting and protecting the lives of Nigerian women and children. You are still watching Weekend File on the network service of the NTA. Now, with bumper harvest recorded during the 2016 work season, it is expected that prices of food items will drop, going by the law of demand and supply. But reverse is the case, as Nigerians, especially those in the urban centers, are concerned with the high cost of food items, while farmers, on the other hand, are happy with the development. In this report, agriculture correspondent Musa Babali takes a look at factors responsible for the development and the steps being taken by government to change the trend. A tradition of prices of food items to go down during and after harvest, as farmers usually push excess of their produce to the market. But the 2016-2017 harvest came with a difference. Despite the bumper harvest, inflation remains high. Farmers and agriculturists attribute the high cost of produce to death of inputs, especially fertilizer. For instance, for a farmer to produce 10 bags of maize, it will require at least 4 bags of fertilizer, with each sold at higher as 12,500 naira 
during the cultivation period. Farmers cannot be able to use fertilizer due to high price. So we want government to support small farmers and the big farmers. Even food has to do with cost of transportation, cost of how you buy your inputs. Demands for Nigerian produce from the neighboring countries as well as agro-allied industries are identified as part of the contributing factors. And the cost of importation of uh, uh, maize is also very high. A lot of companies that before now were importing maize into the country to do their job are now looking inwards to buy. But the exchange rate too has impacted negatively from a number of buyers coming from Niger, um, Cameroon and so on to buy from our farmers at foreign exchange where they earn a lot more. And therefore, the rest of Nigerians have to compete with this. The federal government has raised concerns with the inflation rate and therefore set up a task force on food security to address the worrying incidence of rising cost of food items in the market. The task force, which consists 80 ministers as members, has identified key factors responsible for the high cost of food items. Minister of Agriculture, Audu Ogbe, is a member of the task force. We also find that transporters of food items are complaining bitterly about checkpoints by local government tax officials, sometimes police checkpoints, sometimes other security agencies, demanding money from them for every truck load of food they carry. All these add to the cost. Then, of course, there's a problem of diesel. At 300 naira per liter, the trailer driver moving goods from wherever, Kano, Yola, or Lagos to Kaduna or whatever, is spending more than he or she did before to move the goods. So all of these add up to the cost of food. But it's a bit un, 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 unrealistic to say it is because there is no food. There is. Farmers, if they let them, you know, uh, upscale their production, there's sufficient market, not only for Nigerians, but the entire West Africa sub region. So there is enough incentive, you know, from federal government through the Uncle Boa scheme, through other, you know, um, programs that we have, you know, the GES and other programs that we have in the Ministry of Agriculture, you know, to encourage agribusiness and upscale, you know, investment in, uh, in, uh, in agriculture. On inputs such as fertilizer, the federal government says it has developed a strategy that will boost fertilizer production towards selling it to farmers at cheaper rate. In Abuja, Musa Baba Ali, NTA News. And from Ibadan, experts who spoke with Ayomiko Ajibola have suggested the regulation of food supply chain in order to bring down the cost of food items. Supply chain said lack of accessible roads, high cost of living, and extorting of money from truck drivers who transport farm produce to various urban centers are responsible for the price increase on food items, while some lament that bad roads are also responsible for their produce to get the key before reaching their destinations. Farmer, they don't have enough materials to work on the farm. Fertilizers, like chemicals, drug tax, we don't have that one sufficient to the farmers. The money for transport before the, you are carrying one bag, 500 naira. Now it's 1,005. So everything is already cost. So if you are coming, you will see a lot of police. There is FRSC. So everything now is already tight. Reacting to the federal government setting up a tax force on food security to cover rising cost of food items, experts says it is not the way forward. While some advocate for functional rail transport service, which they believe is more economical. But if government can come up with policies that will enable uh, them to buy from the farmers at reasonable prices that will not be too, too ridiculous. At all levels, federal, state and local governments neglected rural infrastructure. There are, there are no schools, no health facilities, and this have a great effect on the producers who are the farmers. However, identify mechanization, irrigation, use of fertilizers and accessible road network as a ways for increasing food production and the supply to the consumers. Ayomiku Ajibola reporting for Weekend File. 
An agricultural economist with Kebi State University of Science and Technology, Dr. Ayuba Gona, has made some recommendations as a way out. Nora Tanko Wakili reports. Agricultural economists said effective marketing strategy is central to ensuring a sustainable food supply chain in Nigeria. Hence, the need for government intervention to regulate and institute sustainable procedure. Dr. Ali Bagona also reiterated the need for a timely release of credit facility to farmers, as well as resuscitating the agricultural extension services in the country. The issue is that you've given out money to farmers, but you, there is nobody that is monitoring to ensure that that money is truly used for the purpose. They should monitor first to see whether they truly utilize the money for that purpose. According to him, conducive operational environment must be provided for private sector to play its role. The general manager of Nevada Erasmus and Haji Abdullah Edi Zuru said the role of private sector in food production is largely dependent on the existence of a favorable environment for farmers to produce. We have willing and very hardworking farmers that are willing to produce the nation's uh, food requirement, but until and unless they are assisted by the government. Some farmers who spoke to can file an appeal for increased support and proper channeling of such support to genuine farmers. The government has already promised to give, give them the, the support, but still they are waiting for it. According to them, fail to power irrigation machines and fertilizer are some of their major challenges. Kenya said produced over 1.5 million metric tons of paddy rice last year, in addition to other grains and perishables, and is set to improve given the federal and state government's commitment to agricultural production. In Biblia Kibi, Muratanko Akili, reporting for Weekend File. In a similar vein, Bem Hanya in Makudi reports that in addition to the provision of more storage facilities, stakeholders there have also called for the reintroduction of cottage industries for a more holistic approach towards reducing post-harvest losses, thereby reducing the cost of food items. Benue State's economy is largely dependent on agriculture because over 80% of its workforce is involved in farming. In spite of this, farmers hardly get value for their produce because of the lack of processing plants and industries. Though there is a lack of adequate statistics, some studies have shown that many farmers lose between 30 to 40 percent of their produce annually. Successive administrations in the state have made attempts at citing a few industries, but most of these industries either did not take off or are no longer producing. While acknowledging the efforts of the government in the provision of inputs such as improved seedlings, fertilizers, and loans, some farmers called for more to be done in the area of providing inputs early enough, modern storage facilities and cottage industries, which will prolong the shelf life of their produce and add value. First of all, establishing cottage industries that, we, that are capable of processing this uh, agricultural produce across the state. Sometime before we get fertilizer, it will be around in June. Already our, our crops has already grown. As an immediate way of curbing post-harvest losses and reducing glut in the market, the government has linked farmers with off-takers who buy most of their produce soon after harvest. Government is also reintroducing what we used to call marketing board to take care of uh, uh, all that is being produced as excess. We're looking at the uh, Homa Arabic service centers that will now upgrade them to aggregation centers. What remains to be seen is when most of the moribund industries in the state will be revived as promised by government. In Makudi, Bem Hanya, NTA News. And up ahead on Weekend File tonight is the discussion segment with an agricultural consultant. And that's the man who should know. Don't go away. You know, from day one, God makes life easier. They brought us past second billion unbelievable data packages. And even an optic fiber cable to make sure we optimize. There are two things in our lives we depend on the communication and information, voice and data. Whether you sell, buy, learn, 
between serve or lead, it really comes out those two things. Voice and data. Today's world is all about you. You want what you want, how you want it, and Glow delivers. That's why Glow is introducing Flex, the freedom to use voice and data the way you like on every recharge. No plan, no hassle, easy. Now on every recharge, Glow Flexi gives you the freedom to use voice and data as you like. Another first from Glow. No bundles, no data plans, no hassles. The largest data network, Glow, Grandmasters of Data. This is not just a beach. This is not just another kid. This is where I found my inspiration. This is where I learned I can stand on my own. But that together, we can fly. This is the school of life. This is where champions are made. Good food, good life. <laughs> Country people, for sake of saying, make better life fit reach every corner of the country. Eh? DMO will be debt management office on behalf of the federal government of Nigeria. They bring everybody this Ogbonga opportunity to invest and follow contribute to the betterment of the country. <laughs> this Ogbonga opportunity now be the federal government savings bond. As you invest inside this FGN savings bond, you don't join body with federal government with that to reduce poverty and make job opportunity they break it for to put them on top. This FGN savings bond, you go get other better things like guaranteed fixed income will be shopping. Payments will no go change. Your interest payments go day entire your hand fiam. No kind every three three months. You fit take your investment collect low for bank. You fit sell your investment at shares for other market. Now also better opportunity to take safe for picking school fees or marriage, business, house rent, or even build your own house. For more to retouch like www.dmo.gov.ng. Your stockbroker or business advisor. FGN Savings Bond for national development. Now debt management office they bring on this message. Nigerians. Suicide bombers are not spirits. They are not ghosts. They are human beings like you and me. They live amongst us. They are your neighbors. They are your friends today, but terrorists tomorrow. So you must know your neighbor now. Security begins with you and me. Know your neighbor. Be vigilant. Be security conscious. Report suspicious persons, objects, and movements to the police and other security agencies. The security of our nation is a duty for you and me. If you see something, say something. Nigeria, unite against terrorism. This message is brought to you by the Federal Ministry of Information and Culture. And you welcome back. Now, Dr. Innocent Ukuku, an agricultural consultant and uh, group head of commercial services at Notore Chemical Industries, now joins me in the studio for our uh, discussion segment. Dr. Ukuku, you're welcome to We Can File. Thank you so much for having me. Now, uh, as an agri consultant, I, I, I want to believe that uh, <laughs> you, you have an idea of what is going on. And uh, let's begin the discussion by asking you to tell us what, in your opinion, is the reason for the high cost um, of uh, food items today. Uh, of course, considering the fact that uh, there's no shortage of food, in fact, we recorded the uh, bumper harvest in the, last se in the last farming season. So what is the cause of this? Thank you so much. Um, I think uh, the main cost of the current cost of food in the market is the cost of production from last year. Now, um, last year in the marketplace, a major input like fertilizer went up as high as 10,000, 10,500 naira in many locations, you know, when farmers were buying it. I mean, it, it historically, it stays somewhere around five, six, seven thousand. 7,000. So that's a significant rise, and that cost has to be absorbed in the eventual price of the product that the farmer uh, is selling. Now, you know, there are a number of factors that led to that situation last year, so I think cost of inputs. Like you rightly said, this year, I mean, at the harvest time of last year, we kind of had much better yields than previous years. So really when we say um, maybe there's not a good reason why there should be a high price. But if the cost of production 
is high. Uh, farmers are in business. They don't want to sell lower than what it costs them to produce. That's one major factor. And then two, um, a lot of our industries are focused more on sourcing the raw materials, agricultural industries I mean, from locally produced farms, I mean from, from local farmers, rather than import. Uh, in the past, most of the flour mills will import almost everything they use uh, from abroad. A lot of meals was imported, rice was hugely uh, imported, but with the focus of the current government on making sure that a lot of our agricultural produce is locally you know, generated and less, of, less import happens, then this industry is also focusing on local sources. Therefore, even though we had higher yields than we used to have in previous years in terms of national output in grains and agricultural products, the overall pressure on, on using that up yeah, is much higher than you would have had. People who need that as absolutely. raw material. Absolutely. So you have a situation yeah. where a lot of people are but, asking but, more for that than they would have done in the yes, past. Yes, an aspect I'll, I'll, I'll take you on is uh, uh, red oil, for instance. Okay. Right. You don't need the fertilizer. Of course, of course, those who are in the modern farming of, uh, of uh, uh, palm uh, trees yes. you know, could do that. Yeah. But originally we have established uh, naturally made you know, uh, uh, palm, palm trees, trees are there across, you know, right? the foods are and, and of course, so, yeah. and it, it is indeed high now. So why should that be? As a matter of fact, government has also said that, blamed it on uh, cost of transportation, multiple taxation, and all of that. And uh, could all these ones be part of the reason for this, right? Absolutely, they are. They, I mean, they're parts of the reasons why prices are high. But I just spoke from the angle of even the producer of the crop himself. But when you then move the product from the farmer's hand, it goes through a chain before it gets to the end consumer. All of those, all of the elements of that chain also have differences and some changes in their cost. Transporters, for example, diesel costs have gone, have gone up, that's one. Even all the trucks that transporters use, given that most of the trucks, if not all, have all of their spares imported, it means that spares that have been imported today are far more expensive than they were three years ago because of the value of the Naira. Therefore, you know, all of that has to be translated to what is being charged by the transporter for the, uh, for, for the services that they are providing. And then as they go along the road, there's a lot more pressure uh, on them by various tax, tax points. You know, you have uh, state government, you have local government mm. agencies that are interested in internally generated revenue, and a lot, of, a lot of effort, you know, they put a lot of effort in trying to tax every vehicle that goes on their highway. I think it's sometimes about a month ago, I was coming through, there was a lock jam in Lokoja just because, you know, the, they had just increased the, the tax that the tax collectors wanted to collect from truck drivers, and the truck drivers were not going to respond. So there was a complete blockage of the road between Abuja and Lokene, right at Lokoja. You know, so this, these are some of the, the issues that, that contribute. You know, but all of this is, is, is something that I think uh, all the states of government talking to each other, especially the multiple taxation side, can find a, a way to resolve it so that we don't have every local government taxing a truck that is passing, exactly. even that it's been, after it's just been taxed by a local government that is just uh, two or three kilometers away. Mm -hmm. You know, that's something that we, we should be able to address as a nation. Okay, sure you're not in government, uh, you know, uh, as per se, and uh, one will raise this uh, important issue. Uh, it, could it be a good thing to adopt a model, for instance, the one that's working in, in Cote d'Ivoire, you know, for instance, and uh, it is a situation where trucks carrying food are labeled, you know, in such a way that uh, those, um, uh, local government or officials will not stop such vehicles because they are carrying food. Is, 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 you think it's possible? Yeah? Well, um, it is a possibility, but I do not. I do not assume that there will be a situation where trucks will not get pay any levies because they are carrying food items. But I do expect, like I said, if all tiers of government harmonize and there's a single tax point where once it once that tax is paid. The vehicle is allowed to go through, it's labeled, it's shown that this vehicle has paid, is due in terms of just the way we do uh, annual vehicle registration renewal. And once it's done, wherever you go in the country, you don't have to stop to do a new vehicle registration. So that kind of thing, if it can be adopted such that in, even though all the local government areas are interested in internally generated revenue, they can still do it in sync in a way that once you make the payment once, you really can be free to move around and then there will be less... Now, Less multiple taxes. what could uh, the huge investors do here? I'm assuming people decide to invest in, 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 in the agricultural sector uh, with a view to uh, alleviating you know, the cost of uh, transporting food items from rural communities to the city centers where they are highly consumed. Um, is it possible for investors to really you know, engage in this? Well, it, it is possible, um, but I mean, it, the kind of investment that needs to be made 
to reduce the logistic cost of moving food around, uh, an investment that can only be made if government decides to concession uh, some of the facilities that government is in control. For example, uh, if we had excellently working uh, rail system for hauling agricultural produce, there would be a huge drop in the cost of transportation. We also are blessed as a country with, with you know, a lot of inland water, water bodies. I mean, the River Niger, the River Benue, meeting in Nokoja, and all coming down to River State, you know, Lagos State, and all over. That's, that, that kind of very clearly divides the country along lines that if you can have proper dredging of our inland waterways and you have barges that move a lot of agricultural products around, you, are, you really can drop the cost. Of, of, of moving these things. But, I mean, these are investments that I think in some other nations, it's concession if government is finding a bit, a bit of a challenge to find resources to put in those kind of, those kind of infrastructural development. You can concession it to, to people who can make the investment, develop the channels, and then use it for some time, you know, recoup their funds, and then the asset remains uh, that of government uh, going forward. So I think that's one possibility. Now, what can government do at the moment to reverse the trend? Because the, the high cost is increasing by the day. Well, I, I, I mean, I'm not sure what exactly government can do to stem it immediately because of the peculiar situation in which we are as a country. I say so because, number one, I don't know how much reserve we have in our strategic uh, green storage facilities. Because normally what you do in a situation like this as a nation to is to pump to out pump what, you, what you have in your reserve. Because the people who produce the crops, the people who buy and market them, Everyone along the chain are business people in one way or the other. Therefore, none is going to be willing to just sell at lower than what is costing. Number two, none is going to be willing not to take advantage of the opportunities that is seen in the market. When people are willing to pay more for food because it's not, uh, it's not as abundantly available or there's huge competition for what is available, then there's no business person who will look away from that opportunity. What government does in that situation is to pump out what you have in the grain reserve so you then have more than is required by the people. The so you cushion of, the effect. Yeah. So, um, so I, I don't know. I don't have my figures. I don't know f how much we have in reserve today. If we had, that's what government should do. Yeah. Um, I also say so, secondly, because currently as a nation, um, we know the challenges that government face in terms of how much funds is available to do stuff. Otherwise, uh, one can, uh, even if the things are not there, government can decide to say, if we know organized sources of food products, can we do a bit of subsidy on, on food products? So, I mean, that's one way, because I think why it's biting harder on people is primarily because the value of an era has gone down, mm -hmm. which, in, which means, in real sense, the value of the income of every Nigerian is there has actually kind of gone down. Inflation <laughs> and, uh, oh, definitely. That's a All huge right. one. All right. So, so, so that's, that's, uh, those are things thank that you. I think government can do in Th the meantime. Thank you indeed, uh, Dr. Kuku. It's been nice talking to you on uh, Weekend Power tonight. Uh, we'll, we'll share your, your views, and it's, it's very important uh, because uh, we need to get ready for industrialization and uh, when that happens most of the industries will even cons uh, consume uh, what we uh, produce locally and That's so right. much job uh, more, wor uh, more work you know actually needs to be done thank you once again for it's being part pleasure. of so innocent Okuku is an agricultural consultant and a group head of commercial services at uh, notore chemical industries thank you once again it's my now we now pause for more messages a sports update and uh, the weather outlook will be next situation everybody's speculating they say what have we done to deserve this constant changing father father hear us because we trust the failed us they say look to the lord for salvation and he shall redeem you lord i'm getting frustrated yes i'm losing my patience Airtel, the smartphone network. The production, distribution, and sale of counterfeit and fake drugs is a corrupt practice and a crime against humanity. This has informed several measures and strategies to combat fake drugs, including introduction of anti-counterfeit and cutting-edge technologies to detect fake drugs on the spot. These technologies are being deployed to all the states across the Federation, as well as the internally displaced people's camps. The President, Muhammad Buhari, and his team are committed to this fight. 
The federal government of Nigeria, in line with its anti-corruption agenda and posture, will fight a total war against fake drugs and other unwholesome regulated products in order to ensure that Nigerians remain healthy and well. Lend your support and join NAFDAQ to reach the country of fake drugs and unwholesome regulated products. NAFDAQ, safeguarding the health of the nation. Nigerian cricket umpires and scorers uh, hold one day seminar in Abuja as Manchester United maintain unbeaten 16 match run in the English Premier League. Kene Ima Bodike is our guide on sports update. A one day seminar for cricket umpires and scorers has been held in Abuja Saturday with the organizers and participants resolving to intensify efforts at further integrating the sport in the country. This course is actually to bring them to speed about the new changes in officiating worldwide as far as cricket is concerned. Six matches are set to be decided on Sunday in week eight of the Nigeria Professional Football League. Unbeaten Plateau United will be guest of Aqua United in New York. Gombe United travel to El Kanemi Warriors while Sunshine Stars entertain ABS FC. Reigning champions of the Nigeria Professional Football League, Rangers International Football Club of Enugu began their campaign in the CAF Champions League group qualification with a 1-1 draw against JS Saura Friday in Algeria. The away goal advantage favors Rangers as they look to host their opponents in the return leg in a fourth night. Meanwhile, Sunday will see two Nigerian club sides in CAF Confederation Cup action as wicked tourists play away to the Royal Armed Forces Football Club of Sierra Leone in Freetown, while Anambra Warriors FC Ifanyoba welcomed Egypt's Al Masri to Newi. Manchester United went unbeaten in 16 games in the English Premier League. Sing